Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a magical icy text effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2018. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key, that's the command key. And when I say hit the alt key, that's the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. Let's name this uh, whoop, magical uh, icy text because that's what we're doing. Uh, our width here will be 3,840 pixels, height of 2,160 pixels, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color, 8-bit background, doesn't matter, we're gonna change that. Uh, color profile is sRGB and we're using square pixels. Hit create and we're now ready to begin. First thing that we need to do is bring in a background. Feel free to use the link in the description below to uh, download the same background that I am using or you can use any background that you want. However, the first part of this is about changing our background image into a more suitable look and feel for our magical icy text. Okay, so let's bring in that image. Here it is. Uh, and it's just uh, basically an icy looking background like so. Uh, once you've got it in your background, resize it so it fills your screen very nicely, like this now does. Uh, and there we have it. We're now ready to go. And what we're going to do with this particular image is we're going to give it a gradient uh, overlay. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a layer style. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this background because like I said, we don't need it. So let's just chuck that in the garbage. Okay. And then let's go down here to our layer styles and let's go to gradient overlay. Okay. And the gradient overlay that we're using here is going to be a blend mode of lighter color. Okay. Dither is off. Opacity is going to be at 50%. The gradient is a standard black and white, which is this third one right here. If you're using the standard gradients. Okay. If not, then just use your uh, foreground to background. If your foreground to background is this black and white. Okay. So you want to make sure that it's the black and white. Now you can see that mine looks a little bit different and I'll show you why. If I click on the gradient itself, it brings up the gradient editor. And what I did is I took the black, which was over here uh, all the way on the left and the white, which was here all the way on the right. And I put the black here at location 40% and the white here at location 60%. That gives us a very, uh, uh, a very small window of gradation between the black and the white, which is what we want. Okay. So once you've got that set up, you want to make sure that you've got reverse checked, align with layer is checked, style is linear, angle is going to be 90 degrees, scale is going to be 100%. That's all that we need as an effect for this background. Now, what we do have to do is we want to change this into a more bluish, icy feeling background for our text to sit on. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a few adjustment layers on top of this uh, background layer. Let's just rename this as background so that we know what we're talking about here. Okay, so we're going to do uh, four adjustment layers on top of this to give it more of a very cold, icy, frigid feel. Okay, so uh, the first one that we're going to do, if we go down here to our adjustment layers icon on our layers palette, is we're going to go to a color lookup. Okay, we're going to add a color lookup table. Now we have a 3D LUT file here. We're going to go to load 3D LUT, but we're going to just hit the little arrow, and we're going to scroll down until you see crisp winter look. Click on that and suddenly we have a nice bluish ice here. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in a gradient map adjustment layer. So let's go back down here and let's find our gradient maps. Where's gradient map? There it is. Gradient map. Okay, and the gradient map that we want is not found under your standard gradients. But if we go to the little sprocket here and the way that you get there in case you didn't see me do it is you just click on the little arrow there and then you click on the little sprocket go down here to photographic toning click on that hit ok to replace your current with the new photographic and then you want to find this guy right here which is blue number one click on that and you now have a nice blue icy texture there uh, and that's all that we need 
there. Next up is going to be a photo filter adjustment layer to get this even bluer. Okay, so we're going to go down here to our adjustment layer and we're going to go to a photo filter right there. And what we're going to do here is right where it says filter, we're going to go down here until we are on cooling filter. Uh, I think it's this one here, cooling filter, yes this guy right here. A cooling filter 82 is what we're looking for. The density here is going to be a 25% and that's it. Uh, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a curves adjustment layer above this to kind of give this a, uh, a vignette. Okay, so we're going to go down here, uh, put on curves, okay, and we're going to bring our right hand uh, thing. You just grab this. I'm sorry, I said thing. That's just horrible of me. That's, that's a technical term. Don't, don't try and, and call me on that. Uh, and we're going to bring that down to about one quarter of the height that it, it should be. So it's right down here towards the bottom. Okay, then we're going to go over uh, up here where it is the uh, mask icon. We're going to click on that, or you can just go over here to the mask itself and click on that. And see where it says feather? We're going to turn that into a 175. Okay, and we now have a nice feather on anything that we put on our mask. Okay, then we can hide our properties. We no longer need to see that. Make sure that mask is selected. Okay, and we're going to go to our uh, mask, uh, our elliptical marquee tool, which is M on the keyboard. And if it's a rectangle, like you see right here, you can hit Shift M. Okay, and that will give you your ellipse. Or you can just go up here, click once, hold, and drag uh, to the elliptical marquee tool there. And you want to draw a nice big uh, ellipse like so. Then you put your mouse in the center of that and you just drag it until you see the center line there vertically and horizontally. There you go. Once you see that, let go. And then we're going to fill that with black. And if you don't have black as your foreground color, then you just want to click here and then click on X to bring uh, your foreground color to black. And then you want to hit Alt and Backspace. Or in my case, you got to hit it twice because uh, Photoshop CC, 20, uh, CC 2018 still has that Alt bug where if you hit the Alt button on your keyboard, uh, you have to hit the next button twice because it doesn't register the first time. Don't know why that happens. Okay, then we're going to hit Control D to deselect. All right, and then what we're going to do over here is we're going to um, make our... Uh, 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 layer opacity here for our curves layer, we're going to bring that all the way down to about, let's say, uh, 30%. Let's just make that 30% like that. Now what we can do, we have our background, we're all ready to go. We're going to select all of our layers here and we're going to group them, control G, and then we're going to just name that as background. Okay, and there we have our background. Next thing that we're going to do is our text and our text, our Magical icy text is all done with layer styles. There is nothing else. It's just text effect, layer style, and done. Okay, so that it's easy to use and you can change the text whenever you'd like. So first thing we're going to do is choose our text tool, which is T on the keyboard. And then what we're going to do is make sure that white is our foreground. And if you're using black and white like you should be, then all you have to do is hit D on the keyboard to go to default black and white, then X on the keyboard to make white your foreground. And you can see up here, white became uh, the font color of choice. And then let's go into our character palette. And if you don't see that, you go up here to window and character and character palette will show up. Okay, now the font that I'm using, there's a link in the description below where you can download it. It's called Action Is. Okay, so that's the font that I'm using, but feel free to use just about any font you want. Now this effect does work best with thicker fonts rather than thin fonts. Thin fonts tend to fall apart with this, but thicker fonts work pretty darn well. Okay, now the font size that I'm using with my Action Is font is going to be 400 points. Uh, everything else is pretty basic. Nothing really changes. Make sure the color that we're using is white. And I happen to be using the uh, small caps uh, toggle here is on. That's so that when I write with this font, which is an all caps font, uh, it will look like the first letter of every word is a capital letter and all the other letters are going to be slightly smaller, but still done in caps. Okay, uh, so that's what I've got there. Now I'm going to type in my text, which will be... Uh, 
pixel magic, as it almost always is. Uh, and as you can see, the kerning here is all off. That's the spacing in between the letters. So I'm just going to fix that by putting my mouse in between the letters that I need to fix, holding down the Alt key, and then hitting the arrow key left and right to bring things closer uh, together and further apart if needed. Okay, and I'm going to do that for all of this. I'm going to move over to here. Uh, bring this in a little bit closer, this guy here and this guy here. And there we have Pixel Magic looking pretty. And I'm going to click on the check mark here to accept that change. And I now have this. So let's move this where it needs to be by hitting V on the keyboard and then moving our text to about the center right about here. So it kind of looks like it's sitting on a lake where this is the top part. Okay, so. Here, actually, I'll move it up just a little bit. There we go. Uh, so here we have Pixel Magic. And now all we have to do is add in our layer styles. So let's get right to it. Go down here to Layer Styles right there. Click on that, and let's start with our blending options. The first thing that we're going to do over here is our fill opacity. Not our opacity, but our fill opacity is going to change to 15%. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is go to Bevel and Emboss. And Bevel and Emboss is going to be an outer bevel, smooth, depth of 100, direction is down, size is going to be 10, soften is going to be 6, uh, 135 degrees, use global light, as always, is unchecked, we never use it, 30 degrees is our altitude, our gloss contour here is going to be ring, anti-alias is unchecked, linear dodge is our highlight mode, our color here is going to be ECF7FC, uh, and its opacity is going to be at 60%. Shadow is going to be multiply. Uh, the color that we're using is all black, which is all zeros. Opacity is going to be 35%. The next thing that we're going to do is turn on contour right here. And the contour that we're using for our contour is going to be Gaussian inverse. Okay, and if you don't see Gaussian inverse, then you want to go uh, click on the sprocket and do contours and then replace the contours with the contours from contours. Hit yes, and there you go. And our range for this is going to be at 100% and anti-alias is checked. The next thing that we're going to do is an inner shadow. So let's click on inner shadow. And the blend mode that we're using here is going to be linear dodge add. And the color that we're using is going to be EEF8FF. Okay, uh, opacity here is going to be at 40%, angle is going to be 135 degrees, again, use global light is unchecked, distance is going to be 12, choke is going to be 0, size is 22, the contour that we're using here is going to be peaks, okay, peaks looks very similar to uh, ring double over here, so just make sure that you don't confuse the two. Peaks is slightly different, so let's go with peaks, anti-alias is unchecked, noise is going to be at 15%. Then we're going to have a second inner shadow, which you can get by hitting this little plus icon. So the bottom inner shadow is going to be a blend mode of vivid light. The color that we're using is this nice blue of B5 uh, DBFF. Okay, and our opacity here is going to be at 40%. Angle is negative 45. Use global light unchecked. Distance is 12. Choke is 0. Size is 22. The contour that we're using here is ring triple. Okay, uh, anti-alias is unchecked, noise is going to be at 5%. The next thing that we're going to do is an inner glow. Okay, blend mode of dissolve, opacity is 50%, noise is going to be at 20%. The color that we're using is EDF9FF. Okay, and the technique is going to be softer, so source is going to be edge, choke is 40, size is 40, contour is going to be linear, uh, anti-alias is unchecked, range is 100, jitter is 0. Next thing is going to be satin, we're going to be using some satin in here, blend mode of linear light, the color that we're using is D8F2FF. All right, then opacity is going to be 20%, angle is 30 degrees, distance is going to be 25, size is going to be 10, contour here is once again going to be peaks, okay, so peak is what we're using here, see peaks, anti-alias is checked, invert is checked. The next thing that we're going to use is going to be a pattern overlay. So let's go down here to pattern overlay. Blend mode of multiply. Opacity is going to be at 65%. Now the pattern that we're using is this guy over here, which is called uh, frosted glass. Now if you don't see frosted glass when you click on the little arrow here to bring down your patterns, you want to go over here to your sprocket and you want to go to texture fill. 
right here. Go to texture fill, hit replace it. Yes, you do. And then you can find it right here. This is your frosted glass. Okay. Scale is going to be at 65%. Link with layer is checked. Next up in la and, uh, Next, uh, I'm sorry, is going to be Outer Glow, which is going to be blend mode of normal, opacity 100%, noise is going to be a 5, our color here is DCF4FF, okay, our technique is softer, spread is 5, size is going to be 18, contour is linear, anti-alias is unchecked, range is 50, jitter is 0, last thing that we're doing is giving a slight drop shadow, barely noticeable. So let's click on drop shadow. We're going to make the blend mode multiply. The color that we're using is just pure black. That's all zeros. Opacity of 10%. You can barely see it. Um, 135 degrees is the angle. Use global light is unchecked. Distance 17. Spread zero. Size of 32. Contours are going to be ring triple. Okay. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is going to be 16%. Layer knocks out. Drop shadow is checked. And there you have it. There is our magical icy text effect. Now we're going to make this just a little bit more interesting by giving this uh, uh, a little reflection to make it look as if it's reflecting in this ice that it's sitting on. Okay, and the way that we do that is going to seem a little weird at first because we're using all layer styles and when you flatten the layer styles in order to turn them into a reflection, they get a little messed up. Okay, now there is another way to do this. You could just flip it and leave on all, all of the uh, effects, uh, but it, it, it doesn't work as well as I would hope. Uh, so I like to flatten it and then, um, well, I'll explain it to you as I go here. So you've got your uh, text layer here. Let's duplicate that by hitting Control J on the keyboard. We now have a duplicate. Okay, and then what we want to do is move it beneath the original layer there. Then what we want to do is we want to right click on the copy and we want to go to uh, rasterize type like that. So now it's just a rastered image. Then we want to right click once more and we want to rasterize the layer style like so. And you can see that it changed into just a flat style. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to transform that. So hit control T and right click on it. And then we're going to go to flip vertical that will turn it upside down. Then what we want to do is click on it, hold down shift on your keyboard and drag it down. That will constrain it to a straight line up and down. Okay, and put it underneath so that none of it actually touches, but it is underneath. Okay, see so it barely just misses the A there and barely misses the P over here. Okay, once you have that, you can hit enter on your keyboard. Let's rename this as reflection, just so we know what it is. Okay. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to set this opacity to only 40%. You can just hit four on your number keypad, or you can go up here to opacity, select it, and then type in 40. And you can see it looks kind of like a reflection. The next thing that we're going to do is give this a uh, layer mask like so. And then we, we, we what we want to do is make sure that we have our uh, default black and white, which means white as your foreground, black as your background. Okay, and we want to go to our gradient tool, G on the keyboard, uh, make sure that reverse is unchecked. And then what you want to do is just go uh, right at the bottom or the top of the word uh, and then click and hold shift and drag down until you're almost at the bottom and let go. I did that wrong because I am on uh, elliptical. We want to be on linear. So let's try that again. Make sure that you're on linear, go down, and there we have our reflection in the ice. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.